Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Today is the AFC West and NFC West preview show. We will go through all eight teams. That includes the Broncos, Chiefs, Chargers, Raiders, and the Cardinals, Rams, 49ers, and Seahawks. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. You can find out everything you need to know about us. You can find our podcasts, our social media, etc. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at GaryWCE. And I'm at Chris B. Giannini. And the show is at Winning Cures. Of course, we're on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you would, hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave some comments for us. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what we got right, what we got wrong, etc. We will try and comment back to everybody if we can. Uh, there are a lot of you that comment, though, so it may not be immediate, but we will get to you. I promise. Um, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on all of them over at tunicatravel.com. They've got very exciting things in the works. Go check them out. We're going to be down there quite a bit this year, I do believe. Right? Um, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, hit that subscribe button for us. If you're on Apple Podcasts, hit subscribe, then unsubscribe, then subscribe again. And leave a nice review. A written five-star review would help out immensely. We would appreciate your support on that. Share the show out with your buddies. Tell everybody you know about it if you enjoy it. We enjoy doing it. And we like it more when you guys talk with us. So if you leave a nice review, something funny, something interesting, we'll more than likely read it on the show. So just tossing that out there, we will uh, we will give you some props. This year, of course, we will have our Pick'em Contest going on. That will begin the last weekend in August, the first college football weekend. Uh, so we'll have some more, more goodies from Tunica, Mississippi, of course. Uh, and, and we might toss in a few other things. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. But every week, we're going to have a pick'em contest, college and NFL, against the spread. You can find that over at winningcureseverything.com. You ready to fire in? Come on. <sighs> Our buddies in the West Lot Pirates. One of them is a Denver Broncos fan. So let's start with them. The Denver Broncos, 6-10 in 2018. Division championships, or uh, division championship odds, they are plus 1,400, so not great. Strength of schedule, second toughest projected uh, schedule in the NFL. Turnover margin, they were number eight in the league last year, plus seven. They hired in head coach Vic Fangio, uh, who was the Chicago Bears defensive coordinator. Their over-under is seven this year. The juice on the over is minus 120. The juice on the under is even money, plus 100. They are a projected favorite in five games this year. Uh, so not quite to that seven-game level. But uh, as far as total yards per play for this offense last year, uh, middle of the road, 5.5. They were number 18, so 5.5 yards per play on offense. Uh, offense coordinator is Rich Scanginello. I love that name, by the way. They signed quarterback Joe Flacco. Uh, they signed right tackle Juwan Jones. They drafted tight end Noah Fant, or Font, or whatever you want to call it, from Iowa. They drafted offensive tackle Dalton Risner and quarterback Drew Locke. Now, Drew Locke will be a backup to Flacco this year. To start for a little while. Uh, but the other two were expected to start immediately. Yeah. So a little, uh, little surprising that they, were, uh, they weren't built up in that regard. Defense, yards per play, they were number 20 in the league last year. That was not good. Uh, 5.7 yards per play they gave up. Defensive coordinator is... Ed Dontel signed cornerback Kareem Jackson. They signed cornerback Bryce Callahan. Uh, tell me what to like and what not to, or just tell me, tell me something about this team because I don't feel like I can understand what they're going to be. I, I can like tell you exactly what they're going to be. They're going to be a hard nosed defensive team. They're going to press your folks like crazy. Um, Bradley Chubb is going to come into his own this year. Bob Miller is still going to be the beast that he's been. He's not slowing down. Now, what about running back Philip Lindsay? Is it, was he just a well, flash in the pan last I'm year? I'm on the or? defensive side. Hang okay, on. sorry. Hang sorry, on. Sorry, go ahead. Hang on. I think Vic Fangio 
is a defensive genius. I really, really like him. I'm so glad he got an off- uh, 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 a head coaching <laughs> job just because offensive coordinators are, are the only people getting these jobs today. I think if any team was going to hire a defensive guy, I think it's I think it's Broncos. I think they want to play hard nosed defense. Um, offensively, I don't know what to think about the quarterback situation. If I think Vic has his say, he wants to run the football. He wants to. I think they need to mirror what the Ravens did last year: play hard nosed attacking defense. Don't turn the ball over. Run the football. Control the line of scrimmage. Control the game clock. And and they're going to have lower scoring games. Make your field goals. Put points on the board when you can. Don't make mistakes. Um, I'm not a huge fan of all of their um, their skill players. The best player offensively on their team last year, Philip Lindsay, was an, a breakout. Emmanuel Sanders, even in his upper years before he got hurt, was putting up numbers that nobody expected. Came yeah. out of nowhere. If he can come close to doing that this year. I think it'll be massive. Will Phil Lindsay take a step back? Maybe. Might not be as good. They've added a couple other running backs back there. I, I have no idea who will really be the second or third guy. They've kind of got a muddled backfield behind him. But I think I think they're going to try to be something different than what they were last year. I think they're going to be a ball control team that leans on the defense. I've got them at 6-10. and 10. Now, that's under the 7. Now, they were 6-10 and 10 last year. I don't trust Flacco. Uh, I think Lindsey will have numbers, but I think they're eventually going to transition to Drew Locke because I, I don't like Flacco. I agree. Um, and it's, I'm sure that he's a fine guy. I just don't like him as a player right now. As he's aged, he's not as efficient as he used to be. Um, I mean, we'll see. Uh, but I've got him 6-10. and 10. What, uh, what have you got? I got him 8-8. Eight and eight. And eight I think and eight. this team's going to compete because I think defense matters. Okay. I think the schedule is hard strictly because you got to play two games against the Chiefs, you got to play two games against the Chargers. I think I think that that inflates the difficulty of the schedule. Um just just because the teams in your division are that difficult and you got to play them twice. Yeah. Um I don't think this team's going to be afraid of either of those teams. I think I think they're going to, you know, struggle on the road, but when they have those teams at home, I think I think they're going to do just fine. Okay. Um, they're going to win differently. They're going to play a different style of football than than what is being played for the most part throughout the NFL. I, I think that can help them catch defenses off balance because most defenses are preparing for spread it out, pocket passing, or um, elusive running quarterbacks that, that are spreading the football all over the place. I think if they do that, they'll lose. If they don't and they play within their means and play within their talent level, I think they'll win. Okay. Okay. I like this team. I think they compete for a wild card spot. Wow. That's okay. I mean, I've got them six and ten, so I've got them nowhere near the playoffs. Uh if if they won seven, eight, I could I could see that. I couldn't see nine or ten. I just I don't It gets tough. It gets tough. I yeah. mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they won one game better than what I thought, but you Well, know. we'll see. Okay. Uh the Kansas City Chiefs. Twelve and four last year. Odds to win the division, minus 155. Everybody loves this team. Strength of schedule, number nine, most difficult in the NFL. Turnover margin, they were number six at plus nine last year. Their over-under is 10. The juice on the over is minus 115. The juice on the under is minus 105. Yards per play, number one in the NFL last year. 6.7 yards per play. Offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy. Uh, they drafted wide receiver, Miko Hardeman. Uh, with the, I guess, the thought that Tyreek Hill was not going to be around, uh, but he has got no suspension. He's clear to play. Everything's good on that. So the offense will continue ticking along as it uh, as it had last year. Defensive coordinator, Steve Pag- uh, Spagnolo. Is that how you say it? Yes, Steve Spagnolo. Okay. Uh, number 23 on defensive yards per play last year gave up 5.8 yards per play. They signed defensive end Alex Okafor, defensive end Emmanuel Ogba, cornerback uh, Brashad Breeland, and free safety Tyran Matthew. They drafted safety Juan Thornhill. They completely overhauled the defense. I- I'm talking almost every position it felt like. Uh, they were number 32 in early down success rate last year on defense. 
Number 26, uh, least well, least efficient defense, whatever you want to call it. Um, they are a projected favorite in 13 games. Correct. I think the league catches up to them a little bit this year. Ooh, okay. I, I think that the offense slows Well, I mean, Vegas down. thinks the same thing because Vegas got them 10. Yeah, they're over under 10, and I've got them dead on the number. I've got them 10. I looked through that schedule. I mean, the strength of schedule is 9. Um, I think highly of the Chargers. I think... The Broncos going to be pretty good. I, they've got to go to New England again. Um, I I think that they get caught in several more spots this year. I think rebuilding this defense is going to take a little bit of time, and with the way that they play offense, it may not even be the defense's fault. Like I, I think that they can put their defense in bad situations oh, sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've got them ten and six this year. So I like this team a lot. I I think they're the they're the bell of the ball of the NFL right now, and okay. and I think they're going to be thirteen and three in the regular season. Here's what I think about this team. I think they're going to be an MVP team. I think they're going to be um, a team where they're going to have a lot of regular season accolades. The problem is is when the game slows down, and you get into the playoffs, what do we think they can do? Because they're completely different in the playoffs and the regular season. Yeah. And and yeah. that's that's where they're going to make their bones. But I think they're really good. I don't think they're going to take – I mean, Patrick Mahomes threw 50-some touchdowns last year. Like, realistically, I've heard this stat. He I mean, could, it was, it was 5,000 yards. He could touchdowns. lose 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns and still be the number one quarterback in football last year. Like, like that – when I first heard that, I was like, that's not – like, that That can't be right. That has to be hyperbole. That has to be exaggeration. And you look at – no, no. You take 1,500 yards, you take 10 touchdowns away, he's still 40 touchdowns and, and you 3, know, 3,500 yards. Like, that's that's crazy to me. Is yeah. he going to come back down to earth a little? Yeah. But is is he going to fall off a cliff? I don't know. When I – when I saw that metric, I thought, okay. I don't think he falls off a cliff. And then that I, I defense the was bad last year. Strength of schedule is uh, way more difficult this year than it was last year. I don't know that, that, I, don't know um, that I agree with that. I, I don't care what your numbers say. I don't care what the report is. Nobody knows what any of these teams are going to be like today agreed. when they're making a strength of schedule. Um, I think, yeah, going to New England's tough. I think splitting, you know, losing, you know, to the Chargers on the road game in the division and losing to the Broncos on a road game in the division. They, yeah, it's realistic as possible. Man, there's nobody else that scares me. Let's see. They, They're going right, to so be here's, so here's much better than every team that they play very, outside of that. Very quickly, they play at Jacksonville to start, at Oakland, Baltimore, at Detroit, uh, the Colts, Houston, at Denver, Green Bay, Minnesota, at Tennessee, at the Chargers, Oakland, at New England, Denver, at Chicago, and the Chargers. They're just going to be better than all of those teams, except for two or three. They're going to they're going to be heavily favored in all those games. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I like the Vikings. I like New England. I like. I mean, they. I do too, but I don't think they're going to lose all of their tough games. That's I the don't problem. Think so. I, I and mean, if you think they're going to lose all of their tough games, not unrealistic that they do it. Then no matter how good they look in the regular season, you just go ahead and scratch them off in the playoffs. Because yeah. if they can't hang with the tough teams in the regular season when they only play three or four, then the damn sure not winning a Super Bowl. Yeah. And I I think they can. Okay. Okay. I'm with you on that. Let's uh let's move on from there. The Los Angeles Chargers. Twelve and four in two thousand eighteen. To win the division, plus one seventy five are the odds at Vegas right now. Their strength of schedule is projected number seventeen. Turnover margin, number 15 last year in the NFL. They were plus one. They're over under, nine and a half. The juice on the over is minus 160. On the under, it is plus 140. Total yards per play, they were number six. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our, we, we got Chris's puppy in here today. Get baby. Oh, he's gigantic. Uh, total yards per play, they were number six in the NFL last year. 6.1 yards per play for offense coordinator Ken Wisenhunt. Total yards per play on defense, number 11. And Five, I think this they, defense gets better. Yeah. 5.4 yards per play that they gave up. Defense coordinator Gus Bradley on offense. No real major changes. Uh, they signed backup quarterback Tyron Taylor. If they if they, if they they lose Melvin Gordon because it's sitting out, yeah. or they have to trade him away to make something happen, then well, that, that is a major loss. That was going to be my, my big question there. Uh, 
On defense, they signed linebacker Thomas Davis. They drafted defensive tackle Jerry Tillery as a backup, and safety Nasir Adderley is probably going to be a starter. They are projected favorite in 12 games this year. All right, first off, how will how will Gordon's absence affect Le- them? Le'Veon changed the game last year. Okay, the, I, I am I am absolutely afraid of running backs holding out right now, especially. You got the Spanos family who's not going to give in to a player, and, and I'm normally not a big fan of how they run their team anyway and or organization to begin with. Um, when Every year we've had players sitting out. Yeah. Holding out, whatever. We've never had a player just say, I just won't play the entire season. And, and Le'Veon Bell. And, we, and a lot absolutely. of people in the league think Le'Veon left money on the table by doing that. But he still got paid. He still got the contract he wanted. He still got the guaranteed money that he wanted. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I, I think. I think he changed the game. I think if Melvin Gordon digs his heels in, and <laughs> this fool got to get out of here. Sorry, guys. Maui, get out of here. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, if I could close the door, I would. Um, but no, I, it wouldn't shock me, completely, if he just said, "I'm out." And, and if the Chargers just say, we're fine with that. We're going to go on without you. I do think he matters. I got him winning 11 games. I'm, I'm 11 and 5 as well. I like this team. I think they're really good. At I think some this point team could time, win 11 even without Gordon. Now, could they, can they win a Super Bowl without him? Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, he, he might be the thing that puts him over the top. I would like to see them make a deal. We're doing this on August 11th. And, and I would love to, to be able to say he's going to end up in camp and they're going to work this thing out and they're going to figure it out. I don't want him to trade him because I think this team has a chance to be special. Yes. I think they have a chance to be special. Offensively, they got dudes all over the field. I think the one-two combination here with Ingram and Bosa might be the best defensive front in the league. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think they're just scary good. Anthony Lynn, I think, proved a lot of people wrong last year. Correct. Correct. I was a doubter remember, of him. We were, now, I had him winning this. I had him going to the Super Bowl last year. Remember that? Yeah. But but I. But it I was still, still a have, question. I still had. He was my question mark. Yeah, and I, I don't think that's a question anymore. He uh, he he really did well. He proved me wrong. I am, I'm all over the Chargers this year. I like them. The Oakland Raiders are next, four and twelve in 2018 to win the division, plus 1800 odds out in Vegas. Shrink the schedule, and the three most difficult. Turnover margin, 26th. They are minus 7. Or were minus 7. Over under is 6.5. To go over, the juice is plus 130. To go under, it is minus 140. Offense, total yards per play. They were number 21. They averaged 5.4 yards per play. Uh, On defense, number 32. Dead last. Yep. Gave up 6.3 yards per play. Uh, Defensive coordinator is Paul Gunther. Offense coordinator is Greg Olson. They signed... Wide receiver Antonio Brown, well, traded for. They signed right tackle Trent Brown. They signed wide receiver Tyrell Williams. They drafted Josh Jacobs out of Alabama. They drafted uh, Hunter Renfro, who, as crazy as this sounds, looks like he's going to start in the slot for him. Yep. I mean, it was a fifth-round pick and maybe starting. Uh, on defense, signed LaMarcus Joyner, safety. Signed Vontez Burvick, linebacker. Drafted defensive end Cleveland Farrell. And safety Jonathan Abraham, or sorry, Jonathan Abram. Ooh, Mississippi State fans will be mad about that. They are a projected favorite in only three games. I got them five and eleven. Got them four and twelve. And I think four and twelve might be more likely than my five and eleven. I don't know why. That does hard knocks. Do you think influence the over under? Oh yeah, always, always. There's always a boost from hard knocks. Okay. There's always a boost because six and a half just seems absurd. Like I, I, John Gruden has a lifetime contract here. I mean, he's got the 10 years, $10 million. There, there is $100 million guaranteed. 100, yeah, that, yeah, all of it guaranteed. Like, like there's, there's, there's zero, nine years left on this joker. Now, it, it, this is being released on Thursday, but can we talk for just a second about Antonio Brown? Okay. The, the helmet situation. It's uh, just he don't want to play in training it, camp. We're just dragging this thing out. You think that's all this is? He's just trying to find he, an excuse he to has not said be there. He would not play football I, again if he can't wear his he's helmet. He's got $50 million dollars coming to him. Did you see what happened 
like he he literally painted his old helmet. Like it took it to a shop, got somebody to do some crap paint job, and like he he wore his old Raiders helmet, and then he took his old like Steelers helmet and got it painted and wore it out there, and the Raiders just you know we can't let you on the field in that thing. We will get in trouble. We will get fined. We will, if something happens to you, we are in major trouble. We can't let you. And he said, screw it. And then went MIA. Like they just they paid $50 million for this guy and they can't even get him on the phone. And now they're going to an arbitrator and they got it. which why would the NFL, like why even go to arbitration? Because like, they're trying to see if they can get money back. Oakland is? Yeah. No, if, but it was Antonio Brown that filed a grievance with the NFL. He's the well, that's one that's right. going But to they're the, going through an arbitrator to 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 find some happy Brown. medium between this. But if Antonio Brown stays his ground, they want that nineteen million dollar signing bonus back. Okay. So 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 it's easy for him to say, I'm not gonna play until I get a new helmet. The Oakland says, This is not our decision. This is outside of our ability to make this call. If he walks away. We're guaranteed our 19 back, right? I think that's I think that's why you got to if you're Oakland, that's why you have to go to arbitration. It's because you have to fight for what what little you can get back. I don't see any reason why the NFL would agree to let him wear the old helmet. Well, no, they're not going to. There's like seven players that have to change helmets. Tom Brady's one of them. Like there's a lot of guys that had old helmets that they they're all making them change this year. Yeah. So he's not the only one. He's just the only one. He's that's the only one that's a, complaining. That's being a baby. I mean, it's, it's but he's nuts. a child. That's, that's what children do. Oh, goodness gracious. When the kid knocks the milk over, don't let the child handle the milk. Yeah. No, you're, you're right about that.